10 minutes ago, five Soviet SS-18 intercontinental ballistic missiles were launched from a Soviet missile base at the edge of the Arctic Circle. Whether the launch was intentional or accidental is not known. The president was alerted only moments ago and is believed to have put our strategic forces on alert. A civil defense spokesman has informed us that the missiles are on a trajectory towards the east coast of the United States. The probable targets are Washington and New York. NORAD is tracking the missiles, but there is nothing we can do to intercept them. Neither we nor the Soviets. The missiles will impact in less than 15 minutes. This simulation reveals a fatal flaw in America's strategic policy. We are vulnerable and unable to defend ourselves from nuclear attack. Ever since the Cuban Missile Crisis, we and the Soviets have been locked in an ever-escalating arms race that shows no sign of slowing and threatens our very existence. The Soviets are currently deploying their latest generation of intercontinental ballistic missiles and the deadly accurate SS-20. They build the new Typhoon-class nuclear submarine. We build the Ohio-class. The Soviets update their bombers, deploying the Backfire and the Blackjack, while we test the B-1 and equip our B-52s with cruise missiles. The spiraling arms race maintains as the status quo, a balance of terror. And though we and the Soviets regularly plead that we only seek peace, the buildup continues. This impotent policy is ironically called MAD, Mutual Assured Destruction. It presumes that neither superpower will launch a first strike, for if attacked, the other will retaliate with devastating force. Deterrence is not defense. Once a Soviet ICBM is launched, all the deterrence in the world won't prevent it from hitting its target. We can only retaliate. We must end this moment-to-moment -moment threat of annihilation. On March 23, 1983, President Reagan appealed to the American people to try to find a way to render nuclear weapons obsolete. What if free people could live secure in the knowledge that their security did not rest upon the threat of instant U.S. retaliation to deter a Soviet attack, that we could intercept and destroy strategic ballistic missiles before they reached our own soil or that of our allies? Let me share with you a vision of the future which offers hope. It is that we embark on a program to counter the awesome Soviet missile threat with measures that are defensive. The space shuttle offers us an opportunity to step off the nuclear treadmill and out into the new high frontier of space. Commander John Young. The space shuttle will be able to do in five to 10 years what it would have taken us 20 to 30 years to do otherwise. We couldn't do it if we didn't have the space shuttle and that payload capability. It will measurably improve the defensive capability of the country. If we utilize the extraordinary capabilities of the space shuttle to deploy the system known as High Frontier, America, for the first time, will be able to defend herself against a Soviet missile attack. High Frontier consists of three elements. Two levels of orbiting satellites and a ground-based missile defense. The two satellite systems provide us with a network orbiting the entire Earth. They carry tracking and targeting computers and conventional non-nuclear missiles. The ground-based missile defense consists of small swarm jet rockets or new rapid-fire guns positioned around our silos. In the event of a nuclear attack, these three systems will be able to destroy at least 95% of all incoming Soviet missiles. When the network detects the launch of a Soviet ICBM, computers acquire the missile track and send interceptors to destroy the missile during its initial boost phase. Missiles that survive the boost phase encounter the more sophisticated second defense. This system has a more advanced tracking and targeting ability, which allows conventionally armed rockets to destroy a missile's multiple warheads it could also use advanced technologies such as lasers to destroy multiple warheads as they coast through space. Finally, if any enemy warheads survive the space-borne systems, 
the ground-based missile defense fires a high-velocity salvo of small projectiles that destroy the warheads at a distance sufficient to protect our Minutemen silos. Since High Frontier so effectively reduces the threat of a Soviet first strike, we will have little need to continue amassing ever larger arsenals of nuclear weapons. If we put the same effort into deploying High Frontier as we did putting a man on the moon, High Frontier could be operational by the end of the decade. This is no fantasy. The Soviets have launched seven space stations since 1971. They have kept Salyut 6 continually manned by alternating crews of cosmonauts that remain aloft in excess of 200 days at a time. An entire city, Startown, exists solely for the training of their strategic rocket forces personnel. The Soviets launch five times as many rockets and place ten times as much equipment into space as we do. Their commitment is clear, constant, and determined. Ours must be equally so. Space is the future. We can secure the future for America, the West, and the free world. Or we can surrender it to the Soviets. It's time to stop bankrupting ourselves, financially and morally, endlessly producing weapons that can only annihilate our fellow man. It's time we defend our country. Under the mad doctrine of deterrence, we have no defense against nuclear attack. Under the high frontier concept of assured survival, our defense is secure. Our choice is clear. We can assure our survival by seizing the high frontier. Or we can move inevitably towards the day of our mutual assured destruction. I'm General Dan Graham. I am the director of Project High Frontier. High Frontier is committed to providing America with a defense against nuclear weapons. If you feel as strongly as we do about providing for the security of America's future, please help us with this important work. Please write to us at High Frontier, 1010 Vermont Avenue, Washington, D.C., 20005. That's High Frontier, 1010 Vermont Avenue, Washington, D.C., 20005. Thank you.